Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be checking out a couple antique stores on Route 1 in Wells, Maine to see if we can find any model train stuff. I find antique stores are usually not the best place to look for model trains since the selection tends to be kind of few and far between. However, there have been some times in the past where I've been pretty lucky and I've actually walked away with some really nice things at pretty good prices, so it's always worthwhile having a look. Anyways, this was the first vendor in this antique store which actually had some model train stuff. I believe this is an American Flyer O-Scale controller. And then just beside that they had this HO Scale Twin Pack controller. The next vendor we're about to have a look at has a pretty good selection in my opinion in terms of O-Scale stuff. They're kind of like a staple of model railroading equipment at this antique mall. I can remember even when I was a kid 15 years ago seeing these exact same shelves filled with a lot of the same stuff. Which is really good to see because in 2015 this antique mall was actually shuttered and while it was closed a lot of the vendors moved away. And then a few years later some people got together and were actually able to reopen the mall. But unfortunately not all of the vendors came back, so this is one of the few model railroading vendors which decided to come back, and it's good to see these same shelves being packed with stuff again. The majority of the stuff they carry is post-war Lionel. It's possible they have some pre-war, but I wouldn't have a good enough eye to spot it. I also can't speak on what the prices are like since I don't really know the market in O-Scale as well. I saw they had a little bit of HO scale stuff which looked to be pretty good, but there wasn't really anything I was personally interested in. Down here they also had a couple locomotives which were not inside the glass. I think that this locomotive right here might be a DCO scale locomotive. I couldn't see any contacts in the middle, so let me know in the comments what this thing is. I'm kind of curious to find out. Now that's pretty much it for Bomar Hall, now we're on to our second antique store, this one's known as Reed's, it's less than a mile away from Bomar Hall, so I usually like to visit them both just because they're so close together. And this place tends to have a decent selection in terms of model railroading equipment, they're actually where a lot of the model railroading vendors went when Bomar Hall closed a few years ago, and even though the place is back open again, a lot of them stayed here, so I always like to visit and see what exactly it is they have in stock. And as you can see, this vendor had a little bit in terms of Lionel stock. It wasn't anything too crazy, but they did have some various pieces of rolling stock, as you can see. I'm pretty sure that this booth right here is owned by the same person, because they were carrying identical items, basically, all the same era of Lionel rolling stock. However, they did have this really nice looking Lionel steam engine. Once in a while too you'll find some vendors who don't usually carry model train stuff and they have a few odds and ends they've probably picked up from some estate. They had this mug which was kind of cool with a whole bunch of different railroads on it. And they also had this random Bachman McKinley Explorer passenger car. Right behind that there was a vendor with a whole bunch of old die cast pieces of equipment from the 60s. And uh, down here they had some Lionel stuff, mostly just diesels. There wasn't anything particularly exciting, but this vendor usually has a lot of model train stuff. They also had this thing, which I think might be wind-up. I know nothing about it, but if anybody in the comments does, please share. And here's another vendor which doesn't carry model train stuff. However, they did have this vintage American Flyer controller, which was actually sold at another antique store at some point, funny enough. Now the next vendor we're about to have a look at is my personal favorite, and you can probably already see why. They have the widest selection of the entire store in terms of model railroading equipment. The majority of their stuff is, you guessed it, post-war Lionel, which I'm starting to realize seems to be very common at these antique stores. However, they do have a little bit in terms of HO scale equipment as well. There's nothing too fancy, it's all stuff which is pretty common, you know, like AHM, IHC, Bachman, Lifelike, Tyco, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I personally love those sorts of things, so I always want to have a look through and see what exactly it is they have in stock. 
Now, in terms of HO scale stuff, they had this B unit, which I think is for a C liner. Up here, they had a Bachman FT locomotive in a Santa Fe war bonnet paint scheme. It looked to be in really good condition. They had this uh, Bachman General store. I don't really know too much about that. And uh, just some different buildings and things like that for O scale. They had this Spirit of 76 C liner from AHM. And then just beside that, they had a Athern Blue Box Delaware and Lackawanna locomotive, as I believe it is. Looked to be in pretty good condition. Most of the engines here were. The next locomotive was another AHM locomotive. I think it's AHM Tempo in the Union Pacific paint scheme. And then just beside that, they had a Santa Fe Century 430 locomotive, also by AHM. And then finally down here, they had a whole bunch of AHM rolling stock. You can see they had a few freight cars. But then the thing I was not expecting to see was an entire Union Pacific Overland passenger car set. Really just not the kind of thing I would expect to find in an antique store, yet here it was. And then behind that, they had a couple Mantua Tyco sets. As you can see, they have an Amtrak and a New Haven set all in the box there. And a couple freight cars, as well as a old Tyco Chattanooga caboose. Now that's it for the tour. I'll show you all what I bought, and here's the Down Easter. Well, I'm now obviously back home in Canada, and I ended up buying two different locomotives at the last antique store, which I'm really eager to show you all. So here's the first one. It's the Alco Santa Fe locomotive, the Century 430. And uh, I just thought that this was a sharp locomotive. It's not particularly fancy. You know, AHMs are not very high-end locomotives, but uh, they're decent runners and they're very easy to work on. I'm a big fan of them. And uh, this one supposedly is in good working order and it has all the handrails and couplers and everything. It's overall in very good condition. So I just figured it was the kind of thing I wanted to add to the collection. And uh, yeah, we'll test it in a moment here to see if it's uh, actually in good working order. Even if it isn't, it shouldn't be hard to fix up. But in any case, that was the first purchase I made. The second purchase I made is the Spirit of 76 C Liner, which you would have all seen in the video as well. Um, I have most of the AHM C liners. I've got a whole bunch of their different paint schemes, but I don't have this one. So I figured it would be a nice addition to the collection. And it appears to be in very good condition. And uh, supposedly just like this one, it's in good working order. So we'll have to check in on that. So that's everything I bought at the antique stores. It's always fun getting to visit those every time I go on vacation. It's sort of like a tradition, even when I was a kid, uh, like four years old, but even before I had any model trains, we used to go there and then look at the different trains. So it's always a lot of fun. Anyways, let's take both of these locomotives over to the layout and see if they even work. So we'll start off with the Santa Fe locomotive. I think it's gonna start. The main things that fail on these AHMs are the motors. They're not the greatest, but they did say it was a runner. Let's see. Oh yeah. No doubt, this thing runs uh, quite well actually. It's very smooth for an AHM. It's uh, not the quietest engine, none of them really are, but it seems to be running quite all right. Okay, well, I'm quite happy with that. Now, on to the next locomotive, which is the Spirit of 76 C Liner. These ones, uh, I find, have slightly more reliable motors, but they're usually a lot more loud, and they're not the greatest runners. These ones are only four-wheel drive, whereas the other design actually has all-wheel drive. Oh, let's give it some power. Huh. This one runs pretty smooth as well. I kind of think that the person selling these must be servicing the drives because usually these old AHMs are kind of clapped out, but yeah, it's pretty smooth. It's got a nice bright headlight too. So yeah, overall not a bad locomotive. 
Well, folks, I think that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I had a lot of fun buying and testing out these locomotives. And uh, I also should mention, too, there might be another video up sometime this week uh, visiting a train fair. I was out in uh, Smith Falls, Ontario, where they were having kind of like a country fair, train show, train exhibit, a whole bunch of different things. I've never been to anything quite like it, but it was a terrific day, and I can't wait to share it with you all. But until then, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.